Hey guys, welcome to our channel. So, as you know, that we're following along, we've been decoding the Bible changes. Um, the extractions out of that were on the letters. We got the letters to go through genetics all the way. We got them to go halfway through, or uh, excuse me, finance all the way. Um, we got them to go halfway through genetics. Now, um, those of you who are following along, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to uh, tell you the extractions. I'm going to provide the extraction process in my previous video uh, linked below. Um, if you watch the first five minutes of my last video, you'll see the extraction process, but it takes about five minutes to get through that. And that's then, then the videos are running 25 minutes long. So um, we're going to try this a little bit different. We're, I'm just going to, if you, I'll provide my last video in which we correctly uh, did the extractions. And if you watch the first five minutes of that, if you haven't seen it, then you will see it. All right. But right now, um, you got lion changed to wolf, lay down changed to dwell, Trespa trespasses changed to debts, those who trespass against us changed to our debtors, mat changed to couch, and wineskins changed to bottles. After crossing off the like letters and pulling down the change letters, you have, you're left with, I-N-W-F-A-Y-O-N-E-L-R-P-A-S-S-E-S-D-B-H-W-H-T-E-S-P-A-S-S-A-G-A-I-N-S-T-S D-B-R-M-A-T-C-O-U-C-H-W-I-N-K-I-N-S-B-O-T-T-L and we got that to go forwards through genetics and now we are coming backwards and again i'll post uh how we got the extractions it's on my previous video and that's not going to change through this whole decode and so um we'll see uh how this works so um now we're coming backwards because we already went forwards and you start with lt and you end up with uh lympho lymphotoxin alpha its official symbol is LTA, but also known as LT. All right. Um, and I'll let you read all about it. It's a protein coding gene. All right. Um, so you got a protein coding gene right off the bat. Uh, and then if you move on from that, and uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know and haven't seen it, we are coming backwards now. Um, we're starting here. We already came from, uh, excuse me, we already came from here all the way forwards. Now we're starting here and coming all of the way back backwards. All right. So uh, your next uh, thing, your next letters are going to be T-O-B. And uh, TOB ends up being the TOB1 gene, and it is a protein-coding gene. Another protein-coding gene. All right. And I'm not seeing, uh, it doesn't really tell me if this is a human or fly gene or worm gene. Usually I, they do, but uh, anyway, it's a protein-coding gene, which is significant because we get those all the time. So then um, you have, your, then you go move on from that. You got SNI, which ends up being an S, the SNI gene, and it is a protein coding gene in the fruit fly. SNI sniffer. Um, you also have identification crucial genes in uh, peripheral neuropathic pain induced by, uh, this actually says uh, rats with SNI. Um, but, uh, I think, uh, the biggest thing here is SNI gene and it's a fruit, it's a fly based gene and protein coding. All right. Um, I'll provide that link and, uh, I'll get into it here in a minute. Um, but I'm going to move on. That was SNI and it does go through. Um, then you got KNI. As you're coming back, and KNI ends up being the KNI gene, and it's a steroid receptor in the fruit fly. So another uh, fruit fly gene, 
My fiance predicted animal genes. Well, we're getting a lot of fly and worm based genes, right? Um, so, um, then if we keep moving from that, um, that was KNI. That's a steroid receptor. Then you have WHC, and that ends up being um, water holding capacity. Now, why is that important in genetics? I'm not sure. <laughs> The amount of, uh, but I'm in PubMed here, uh, genetic aspects concerning drip loss and water holding capacity of uh, porcine meat. The amount and distribution of water inside the meat has a considerably, has a considerable influence on its properties. High losses of fluid in the form of drip may affect f financial output, nutrition value, uh, consumer appeal and or technological properties of porcine meat. Therefore, a deeper insight into the traits water holding capacity WHC and drip is favorable on behalf of producers, industry, and consumers. Uh, similar to most meat quality traits, WHC and drip loss, DRIP, are moderately hereditary or heritable. All right, the, kinetic, the, the genetic correlation between these two traits is high. All right, so um, that does, that's, it definitely deals in genetics there. And uh, so that's, that was uh, WHC. Now, if you move on from that, you've got UOC. And UOC ends up being UOC Institute for Genetics in Germany. All right. Institute for Genetics, UOC Germany. Then right below that, you have Institute of Human Genetics, UOC Germany. So you got a couple of things on these guys here. And by the way, and I'll provide the links, or at least one of the links, or maybe both of them actually, they're both there, but uh, we have went ahead now and circled these guys. Um, UOC. Institute for Genetics in Germany. There's another German connection. We had some of those before as well. And here's genetics in, uh, an Institute for Genetics in Germany. So I find that interesting. Um, so then if you move on from that, um, your next thing is TAM. Is your next set of letters. And TAM ends up being TAM gene. It is a protein coding gene in the fruit fly. Again, another uh, insect-based, animal-based gene, and it's a protein coding gene. Um, we get those a lot, again. Um, so then, if you move on from TAM, you got RBD, and RBD ends up being sleep behavioral disorder. Oh, behavioral. Yeah, we got a couple of those going forwards, right? Um, some behavioral genetics, some behavioral uh, genetic studies. Uh, here is sleep behavioral disorder. And I'll read a little bit about it. Rapid, our, rapid eye movement, REM, sleep behavior disorder, RBD, is a <coughs> prod, prodomial condition. Pro, pro, prodomal condition for Parkinson's disease and other synucleopathies, which often occurs many years before the onset of PD or Parkinson's disease. We analyzed 261 RBD patients and 379 controls for nine PD-associated SNPs and examine their effects, uh, first upon RBD risk, and second on eventual, RBD risk, excuse me, and second on eventual progression of syn synucleopathies in prospective follow-up in a subset of patients. So, um, you got, I'll provide the link, you guys, but uh, that is a sleep disorder. Um, RBD, a sleep behavior disorder, nonetheless. 
All right. So moving on from that, you have STS, which ends up being sequence tagged site. Sequence tag site, STS, is a relatively short, easily PCR amplified sequence, 200 to 500 BP, which can specifically, which can be specifically amplified by PCR and detected in the presence of all other genomic sequences and whose location in the genome is mapped. All right. And, and this goes on, guys. Uh, it was a, the STS was concept was introduced by Olson et al. in 1989. Uh, so yeah, you guys can read all about that. It's about human the human genome, um, but it's there, and that's your STS. All right, moving on from that, you have NIA which ends up being a National Institute on Aging, and they deal with Alzheimer's. Um, aside from that, you have NIA, Laboratory of Genetics and Genomics, N-I-A-N-I-H. So uh, that seems significant. Uh, then you have NIA GADS, which is the National Institute on Aging Genetics of Alzheimer's Disease Data Storage Site. So um, that's like a big old database on Alzheimer's. And so mostly you're dealing with Alzheimer's, guys. Um, but uh, I might just provide this search and you guys can look at the individual links. Or maybe I'll provide the links. I'm not sure. I'll, but it'll be there, guys, either way. You'll be able to see this stuff. Um, so if you move on from NIA, um, you end up with, I said the laboratory, right? Oh, okay. You end up with, uh, your, your next letters are going to be AGA. And AGA... ends up being, well, you got American Genetic Association on, uh, but that's Wikipedia, and uh, I guess I could uh, Google uh, American Genetic Association, see if I can find another source on them. But uh, aside from that, um, which I suppose I would want to circle, um, if I could find it anywhere but Wikipedia, you also have AGA gene. AGA gene, and I'm trying to get into it because I was looking at this. Uh, uh, yeah, here it is. The AGA gene provides instructions for producing an enzyme called aspartylglucosaminidase. Aminidase. This enzyme is active in lysome, lys, lysosomes, which are structures inside cells that act as recycling centers. All right, so the AGA gene, guys, and uh, I'll provide that link, and I'll probably provide my search there so you can look at the, uh, the whatever the heck I said, AGA, American Genetics Association. Yes, that's what it was supposed to be. I didn't write it down either because uh, it was on Wikipedia, guys, so bear with me on that. Um, then you have SSA, which we had going forward, single-strand annealing. All right, we had it before, so I'm not going to read about it. Um, it was just in part one of, of genetics here. But uh, if you move on from that, um, you wind up with, and I think that's significant, by the way, that you get it forwards and backwards, both. Um, but uh, anyway, um, you move on from that, and you have, ew, I didn't write it down. But you have PSE. I don't know what I must have done here. PSE, and PSE ends up being uh, the PSE1 gene. That affects protein secretion in sacra, sacar, 
Oh, Mrs. Souls. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, this is a protein secretion enhancing gene. All right. So not a protein coating gene, but a protein secretion enhancing gene. And I suppose I should make note of that, that I didn't uh, write that down. But uh, yes, now it's going to be out of order for me, but I'm going to write PTE. And, uh, or no, not PTE, PSE, excuse me. PSE. Where is my PSE? Oh, man. This is killing me. Uh, actually, it would have been over here. Where is PSE? Oh, right here I found it. That's where we're at. Okay, PSE. So I'm sorry for this, guys. Uh, I thought I wrote it down, but uh, PSE, PSE1 gene. All right. And uh, so, um, uh, my apologies for that. I just skipped writing one down, apparently, for some reason. So, um, then you end up with uh, THW, uh, PSC, THW, correct. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm not completely off. And that ends up being uh, the THW. Uh, gene, which is a putative new tumor suppressor gene. Tumor suppressor gene. All right. We've had those before as well. All right. So then if you move on from that, you got HDB, which ends up being HDB stat, um, microarray. Uh, so HDB stat, high dimensional biology. Uh, micro micro array technology is a recent and important breakthrough in molecular biology that allows for the simultaneous assessment of transcription levels for thousands of genes. All right. However, micro arrays generate a large amount of data, creating a challenge in the storage and analysis of these data. Many efforts are focused on providing tools and developing methods for analyzing microarray data. All right, and this goes on. I'll let you read about it. I'll provide the link. But uh, that's uh, basically a data storage, a database, a huge database. <coughs> All right. Um, so then you have SES. And uh, SES ends up being... Uh, genetic influence on family socioeconomic status. So SES is socioeconomic status, and apparently they're studying genetic influence on that. Um, so there is that, and I will provide the link. Seems like a strange thing, but that's what they're doing. <laughs> so uh, moving on, now you're left with, a, you're coming back, you got APS which ends up being antiphospholipid anti syndrome. Um, it is a blood disease. So, and, a, and it is an autoimmune disorder. All right, categories, but blood disease. APS is an autoimmune disorder. Signs and symptoms vary, but may include blood clots. Miscarriage, rash, chronic headaches, dementia. Oh, I bet. And seizures. <laughs> so, uh, APS occurs when your body's immune system makes antibodies that attack phospholipids. A type of fat that are in all living cells, including blood cells and lining of blood vessels. All right, so uh, I'll let you read about that. We're trying to move on. And uh, when you move on from that, um, you have RLE, and that ends up being the RLE1 gene, and it is a worm-based gene. 
and it is a protein coding gene. All right, and I will provide the link, but again, my fiance predicted animal stuff. There's some more animal stuff, and there's some more protein coding genes. Protein coding genes, non-protein coding RNA that we got in uh, forward search, right? Part one of this genetic thing. So um, then if you move on from that, and by the way, I used a couple of these letters a couple times, which is fine. Um, because the computer will do that anyway, and also arrangements that I did not use. So um, you wind up with ENO, and that is the ENO gene. And uh, the Zymomonas mobilis gene encoding enolase was cloned by genetic complementation of oh wow e coli eno mutant ash erechia coli eno mutant so um yeah uh, oh apparently uh sequence analysis of the eno region revealed that opening oh that an open reading frame 1,293 BP that encodes a protein. Now, so it does get, it is a protein coding gene. All right. So now we know that. Um, then if you uh, move on from ENO, you end up with Y, which we already have had before. It's the Y chromosome. Um, I don't think I have to read about that uh, this time. Uh, we had that in a previous search, not the Bible, uh, not this one, but then you move on from that, you have AF, which is arteal fibrillation. Whoops. Uh, ar ar arteal fibrillation. AF is often associated with hypertension and structural heart disease and traditionally has not been considered a genetic condition. However, a number of... And they're, I think they're studying it, guys. Uh, for some reason, by the time I got here. Uh, yeah, that's what they're doing. They're studying the genetic uh, correlation. Uh, however, a number of recent studies have demonstrated that AF, in particular, or lone AF, have a substantial genetic basis. All right. So, arteal fibrillation. Um, then, if you move on from that, you have FW, which ends up being the FW gene, and it is in the fruit fly. Um, it does not tell me right off the bat. Oh, biological process. I don't see what it does. Oh, here we go. Protein names. So it, maybe it's a protein coding gene, guys. Um, I'm thinking it's a protein coding gene. So I'll provide that link. They certainly mention protein. So um, then you have... Um, N-I is what you're left with. And you end up with N-I-C-A-N, Northern Ireland Cancer Network. All right. Uh, cancer uh, Network, excuse me, there's some stuff going on outside. Kind of lost my place. I'm sure we're running this long. But uh, uh, Northern Ireland Cancer Network. Um, the NI Regional Genetics Center have updated their guide for familia, familial, familial cancer referrals, cancer genetics services referral guides. Cancer risk explanation tables are provided for guidance together with a referral form. And uh, that gets you through backwards. Finally, um, and I've circled these guys. I've circled these guys. Um, 
there's a cancer institute and uh, uh, that seemed significant to me so we went ahead and circled them to look for the to walk keep an eye out for them as we go along with all the other things that we've circled along the way here which is a lot but we're gonna have a lot of numbers to run so <clears throat> you know it should all work out uh, for us in the end um, so uh, we figured there'd be a lot to look at and by the way we may have made a mistake like uh, we not a mistake but um, I've been thinking and we've been thinking that when we have multiple potential quantum computer users in the end like our last decode where we had three we should list all three instead of picking one because uh, they're all possible anyway or potential not definite so if we've got three possible we should list all three but we're learning as we go we don't have a blueprint for this so that's genetics guys I'm sorry for running it long uh, but next, we will all try to get through medical, at least part one of medical. I'll see what I can do with that. Uh, we'll see this probably will take forever to load. So, guys, thanks for all your thumbs up, thumbs down. Thanks for your comments, leads, feedback, and subscriptions. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. Again, I'll post uh, my previous video, um, which we uh, correctly uh, got the extractions and showed our extraction process. Um, it's 26 minutes without that <laughs> and there's nothing we can do about it so uh, thanks a lot for watching guys and for now you guys have a great rest of your day